Doom from id Software was a highly influential and massively popular first-person shooter and is undeniably one of the most important video games ever made. Ah, yeah sure, you've heard that a million times before. But now that we've got that out of the way, you haven't really experienced the sheer gaming terror that is Doom unless you've played it on the Super Nintendo. I mean, seriously, what's scarier than not being able to see anything other than a big old mess of pixel puke all over the screen? Alright, so before I tear this port a new one, we have to give props to Paul in California who sent this inside of a really interesting box of games for us to review. We definitely appreciate it. So of course, we've got to bear in mind here that bringing the immersive three-dimensional nightmarish world of Phobos onto a 16-bit platform was undoubtedly a daunting task. Williams Entertainment took on the development duties and utilized the Super FX2 chip to help out on the 3D rotational effects. And actually, they did an admirable job considering the technology they had to work with. This port was released in 1995, in the final years of the console's lifespan, and for its time, this was certainly a good option for Super Nintendo owners to get in on the Doom phenomenon, if they didn't already have it on their PC, or PlayStation, or Atari Jaguar, or 32X. Yeah, so these days, when you see that the original Doom has officially been ported to seven different computer operating systems, nine consoles, two handheld consoles, and even the iPhone, the surmounting number of problems that plague this version drag this bright red cartridge all the way back down to hell. Ah, uh, so where do I even start? <laughs> I've already mentioned how difficult it is to see anything. The textures are all just a big glitchy mess, and the frame rate is a pretty sluggish 15 frames per second. But if you think abstractly enough, I guess you can still navigate just fine. The main problem is being able to see enemies. Huh, I guess those pixels are shifting around and my health is going down. I guess I better shoot in that general direction. Oh yeah, and if you have the shotgun, that tactic actually works pretty well since it's been altered a bit. Instead of spraying seven shots and blasting away any demons in close range, it now fires one shot that can now be used to take out anything regardless of distance. So it's more like a hunting rifle, I guess. So that's not necessarily a big problem unless you're a Doom purist, but it's an interesting change. Oh, and another interesting enemy issue is that they are only animated when they're facing toward you. So sadly, you don't really get to witness any of that awesome monster infighting, a groundbreaking AI innovation from the PC version. But they can at least still accidentally damage each other with projectiles. But what certainly goes beyond the visual shortcomings is definitely a problem with the controls. Now, the button layout is actually just fine, and strafing with the L and R buttons works great. But in general, the game just drags so hard that your controls feel very unresponsive, and there's a pretty noticeable delay in your Space Marine's actions. Thanks to this, the game is way harder than it probably should be, and that's even further compounded by the lack of a save feature and lack of cheat codes. Now, those two feature omissions arguably add to the terrifying challenge, but I'd say they're options sorely missed in this port that's painful to even look at today. Throw in a handful of missing levels, and this version simply can't hold up to the plethora of superior ports that are available. And unfortunately, it ends up as a bright red plastic novelty piece in your Super NES collection. 